question, and this is a legitimate question as far as like what change. the what the technique is. Um, late in the game, I think Keyshawn was back there, but I'm not sure because I know he got banged up. The ball lands at the four, rolls down to the one. I know you don't probably want to catch a ball in that spot normally, but it did seem like there was room to run. So is that, again, just kind of the calculus in the returner's head? Or is, it, is there a hard and fast rule, dude, if you're at the five, don't go catch the ball? Yeah, so we tried we try to, in those backed up punt scenarios, we try to not make it where there, there's a whole lot of gray for the player. Um, we are deeper than some peop, some teams, you know, I've. I've heard people say, you know, put your heels at the 10 or put your – we are heels at the 7. And there really is no time that we want our guys inside of that. Um, obviously, not having the ball at the 1 is, is preferable, right? But uh, with the ball hitting at the 4, you're hoping that it hits and rolls and, and you're playing the percentages there. Um, you know, and, and through a lot of analytics is why we choose the 7. Um, and, and I thought, you know, in, in that case, based on everything we coached uh, to have happen, he made the right decision there. With the onside, is that something, was that something Coach Norvell brought to you? Is that something that, I guess, how did that kind of come about? And I guess, what can you say about Parker's execution on it? Probably couldn't have been much more perfect. Um, well, first part of your question is in terms of how that went down. Um, Coach did say he wanted something earlier in the week. That, that was aggressive like that and that kind of mindset. And uh, he suggested that we have, have something ready for that. So, um, you know, that was, that was how kind of that started. Because, um, you know, one of the, those calls are good, but, you know, as the head coach, you have to want to do them, you know, and, and, and coach is, is aggressive. And, uh, you know, he wants to take advantage of those opportunities when he's there. So um, that's the first part. And then Parker's execution was, was uh, Obviously, really good. Um, you know, it was gutsy to go in there and get it. Um, it, was, it was a really uh, good kick by him, and um, I, just overall, I thought it was a big play in the game and um, gave us a chance because we needed a spark. We needed some momentum at that point in time in the game. When Kier makes a play on the inside, do you get credit or does Odell get credit? <laughs> um, and, and just on a serious note as well, just in, in a game like this, rivalry game, a game against Miami, how important? It, are guys like Kier in these kind of games that it means so much to him? Um, he's from that area. I mean, I guess that's the beauty of college football when, when these opportunities arise for kids like that. Sure. You know, I, I could tell um, just by the, his body language and posture in his chair yesterday before we even took the practice field that uh, he's locked in, ready to go. Um, you know, he played uh, well on, on Saturday, and uh, obviously he's going to be excited about this week. But, um, you know, to play well in these these type of types of games to me it's about uh, your preparation the week that leads up to it and then controlling your moment or controlling your emotions in the moment um, because yes I want him to to be excited to play but not to the point where it takes him out of who he is and what what he's been able to do really throughout the course of the year so um, I know he's fired up and I know he's ready and uh, you know I'm excited for him to have the opportunity to, to play this game Following up on, on Kier, uh, after the game, I think somebody asked him about the defense, it might have been me, about the defense, the missed tackles and just kind of some, giving up some big plays. And he, you know, he was just like, just make the tackle. Like he sounded mad. And Coach Fuller said that the, he, you're seeing more accountability within the position groups and, with, you know, the team. How different is that in terms of the way guys are holding each other accountable versus maybe a year ago? Well, um, you know, I, I think you've seen a, a growth uh, overall from the defense as the year has gone on. Um, you know, last year is last year in terms of just it's just a, such an odd year with a new staff and, and the way the year went with kind of the COVID and all the different bodies that were rotating in and out of the lineup. But uh, it's been pretty consistent in terms of who's playing, um, you know, for the most part over the course of the last at least seven or eight weeks. Um, and, and I think when you have that type of, of consistency within personnel groupings, um, you know, there, there is, the, and we do a lot of meeting together. Um, so the more comfortable you get with each other and, the, and um, I think the more the time you've put in and the more work and all the practice, I, th I think there is that comfort level to, to talk. And I, it's a close group and, um, you know, there is accountability within the defense. And, and uh, that's not, sometimes that, that's looked at from like as a negative, uh, like it's always accountability is, is a negative thing. But when good things happen, um, you know, 
whether it's good things on the on the back end or on the front end, um, those guys are cheering for each other and they're pulling for each other. And um, you know, I, I, you do see a, a group that's starting to come together. And um, you know, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, we, we really see it uh, reach its full potential because I don't I don't think we've seen our defense. Um, we've seen flashes of it, but we haven't seen it do a whole game of it of its full potential. And, and we need to do that. Um, and ho this would be a great week to get it started. You guys are promised only three more games this season. Kier and Jermaine, especially, they're only going to have three more games here at Florida State, most likely. Derek McClendon, Quayshawn Fuller, the younger guys, do you push more urgency on them? Do they need to be able to detect that on themselves? How does that work? Uh, you know, I, you keep pushing um, those guys to develop regardless of how many games you got, you know, because you're looking to always build your team and build your depth. Um, and, and you do see the growth of, of a lot of those, a lot of the, you refer to Derek and Quayshawn, but you do see a lot of guys growing and, and getting more expansive roles as they, as they continue to develop. Um, but I, I don't think, uh, you know, my mindset, our mindset from a coaching standpoint doesn't change in that, um, you know, these three games, we're starting this week, it's about winning this week. And, uh, you know, next year and who's going to be playing next year, we'll worry about that um, as, as these weeks kind of tick away. But um, this is about this week and, and going and making sure we put the best team on the field that we possibly can to win the game. We'll go to Ira here for the last one. Actually, the two-parter. Uh, about Parker, um, did he uh, did he pull anything on that? Was it on that play, or was it or was it on the ensuing kickoff? Yeah, no. So um, on the on the kick, um, you know, I think there was a lot of adrenaline and everything that kind of went with it. Um, you know, he was fired up when he came over, and he did tell. I mean, he did make the comment to me that he got you know rolled up pretty good. We go down and score. I ask, you know, are you okay? And you know, I still think he feels good about you know everything that happened and um, you know I can't tell you from from like a, a medical ex like exactly what happened in terms of when um, we're assuming on the kick is when when he kind of got rolled up a little bit because um, when he hit the obviously when he hit the next kickoff he came over and said he he was had to get checked out so um, you know that that obviously in hindsight you wish you knew that before you put him out there for the second kick that that he wasn't really ready to do it but um, you know, he was fired up. He was ready to roll. And, uh, you know, Ryan came in, and um, I feel comfortable with him if he has to do the kickoff. So we'll see where this week goes and, and let that part kind of play itself out. And then the other thing was on, on Alex, um, I mean, you know, it seemed like it was a, for a big chunk of that game, it was kind of a field position battle and just how well he, he did for you guys. Yeah, Alex. Alex had a very solid game for us. There, you know, there was a couple times that uh, we asked him to kind of flip the field over, um, and he did a nice job of that. Um, you know, he got a couple punts down inside the ten, which which is obviously critical. Um, you know, I thought he did a really good job, and, the, and then the ultimate weapon that he does provide is uh, if somebody does want to kind of load up one side to, to to block off of our right side, which is what we see predominantly, he can roll to the left and punt um, either with his left foot or late in the game he just kind of rolled to the left and punted it in a more traditional way. So um, just having his multiplicity and, and style of kick I think is an advantage for us, and um, I thought he played well the other night and it helped us. Thank you, everybody.